Your daughter just had her first breakup. Do you A, put yourself in her shoes? <laughs> B, console her? Don't worry, sweetie. This is gonna happen a lot. Or C, find her a new boyfriend. Nice single boys. That was weird. As a parent, there are no perfect answers, but you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. Welcome to TV20 News, we are Cleveland, I'm Leah Hastledge. The Cleveland Division of Fire received a new piece of art thanks to a generous donation from a resident. Joe Burdick of Burdick Custom Flags delivered a beautiful hand-carved wooden flag to Chief Angelo Cavillo. Burdick says designing the flag was a labor of love and was honored to give it to the Division of Fire. I wanted to show my appreciation for all that the firefighters do, I wanted to give it to them on today, which is a special day for us all. And I spent a lot of time, I put a lot of pride into this flag, and I wanted it to be as close to perfect as I could make it for them. It is beautiful, and I, I'm so proud that uh, we have the opportunity to mount this flag here in our lobby today. So honored. In designing the perfect flags, Joe says he's not looking for the most perfect piece of wood. It's corny, but I say that it's, it's like us. We have flaws, we have imperfections, and I want my flags to represent us as people and show our flaws, show we've all, we all have battle scars, and you know, my flags are imperfectly perfect. The thin red line on the front of the flag represents all firefighters, and on the back, Joe put a prayer for their protection. Dear God, we lift up our firefighters in prayer whether the blaze is large or small. Protect them on each fire call. Amen. Joe Burdick. If you want more information on Joe and his flags, look for Burdick's custom flags on Facebook. Well, the Cleveland Division of Police recently held their 36th annual 4th District Community Relations Award Ceremony at the Benjamin Rose Institute on Aging. The 4th District Awards honors the heroism of the officers and residents, but District Commander Brian Cutts says it also honors those who do more than just fight crime. Uh, the officers uh, spend a lot of time working with our community, meaning that uh, other than just going for calls for service, uh, we have officers that are out on foot patrol, bike patrol, um, all different types of manner of interacting with the community, um, and in schools, community meetings, at uh, ward meetings, you name it, our officers go there and interact with the community. Cleveland Mayor Frank Jackson attended the ceremony and helped give out the awards. Police Chief Calvin Williams says that this event further exemplifies the importance of a strong police community relationship. You know, we're all about the police, our citizens, our business people coming together to make the city better and more, most importantly to make it safer. And we've said time and time again, the police can't do it alone. Uh, it definitely has to be a police community partnership. And you see tonight by the awards that were given out to the citizens and the brave things that they do day in and day out to keep us safe. So this is always a great opportunity to recognize that and to make sure people really understand it has to be a partnership. There's a lot of work that goes into it, and there's a reason. You know, anything worth doing is, is anything worth doing is hard to do, and uh, and it's very important. Um, it brings the community together. It, it unites us, the officers, with the community, and shows that we're in this together. I think this evening's event, where you saw the officers standing up and applauding for the citizens, uh, it was that's phenomenal, and that's how we feel. You know, without without us, there's no them. Without them, there's no us. 
The first annual InterCLE welcoming event from the Friends of Global Cleveland was held at the Global Center for Health Innovation. It was a chance for international students from over a dozen local colleges and universities to meet and mingle with their peers and learn about the great opportunities in our community. So the goal of today's event is to make sure everybody here as newcomers can get connected, find people from their same country, and then know Cleveland is a welcoming city. We as Friends of Global Cleveland, we are a group of people just like them. We are either formal international students or newcomers, or just like, like Alex, who is a global-minded young professional. We want to help them to build Cleveland into their second home. Mayor Frank Jackson was on hand to welcome the students to both the event and the city. This is something that we want to do every year. Uh, we have to demonstrate that Cleveland is a welcoming city. Cleveland is a city that welcomes everyone and that when you're here, you will have some of the greatest opportunity to advance yourself in terms of education or career. So we'd like for you to stay also. Additional speakers participated in InterCLE, offering advice and words of encouragement. And of course, tell us why it's great to be in Cleveland. It's important to make everybody feel welcome. Cleveland was founded um, originally by people that weren't from here, so we're trying to keep that trend going, uh, repopulate neighborhoods, get the population back up, and there's also a huge economic impact for refugees and immigrants to Cleveland as far as starting small businesses, working in the city and spending money in the city and um, choosing to live here. For more information, visit globalcleveland.org. Well, the rain didn't stop Cleveland senior citizens who came to downtown Cleveland to do some walk-in. TV20 reporter Dan Monroe has more. Public Hall was a location as senior citizens from all over Cleveland came to town to participate in the Department of Aging's 13th annual Senior Walk. Aging Director Mary McNamara says this event is all about being and staying healthy. This is the 13th annual Cleveland Senior Walk and even the rain won't keep us from walking and staying healthy. So we moved into Public Hall today. We've got more than a thousand older adults out here staying healthy. Besides just being active, participants were learning how to stay active. A variety of vendors were on hand passing out literature, samples and much more. Yeah, we have great partners in this. Partners like the Western Reserve Area Agency on Aging, Metro Health, the YMCA, the Ohio Department of Aging, all committed to an age-friendly and a healthy Cleveland, wanting to give information. We're doing blood pressure screenings. We're giving flu shots today. We've got uh, vision tests that are being done by CSU, Neomed. So a lot of great partners. One of the partners that came to the Senior Walk was a group called the Silver Sneakers. The group can be found at many rec centers throughout Cleveland, and Territory Manager Adrian Mastriani says that the Silver Sneakers offer a unique experience to those who are active in it. Uh, their experience really is a, a whole program of fitness and social um, aspects. So we do, of course, the fitness programming. All of our classes are included with Silver Sneakers, but then also the social programming, which is a chance for the seniors to meet new people and really uh, have that experience with the fitness side and getting active and, and healthier, but also meeting new friends as well. There was more than just walking at this year's senior walk. People could stretch out by doing a bit of yoga or get their heart pumping with some rhythmic exercises over in the main stage. Some of the lucky ones found themselves in an impromptu line dance with another group of seniors, high school seniors. First time attendee Rebecca Russell says the senior walk is, in a word, awesome. I love the support as we walk around. I love the snacks that they gave us. The information, I haven't been able to read it yet, but so far it seems very helpful. With so much walking, it's easy to fall and get injured. Director McNamara gave me some tips on how you can prevent slips, trips, and falls in your home or when you're outside. Things like don't let a throw rug throw you. Make sure those throw rugs are secure. Make sure the footwear you're putting on your feet are, is stable and secure and has a grip on it. Make sure you light it up. Turn on the lights when you're walking through hallways or bathrooms or outdoors. Turn on the lights. Make sure you get your vision checked at least once a year. That's a normal change in aging. And these are all things you can do to help prevent falls. Good advice indeed. At the 13th Annual Senior Walk for TV20, I'm Dan Monroe. Thanks, Dan. An apartment in Cleveland just celebrated its 10-year anniversary with a fabulous party. What makes this apartment so special is all about who lives there. 
It's called When Pissing Our Apartments, and it's home to some of Cleveland's senior citizens. Melissa Tarrant works for the Elderly Housing Development and Operations Corporation, or EDOC, which owns the apartment complex, and she says the apartment offers many services to its residents. Well, we have a service coordinator that actually provides services for our residents. So in the, in the event that they would actually need some sort of services, whether it be an in-home aid to assist them with housekeeping with their apartments, whether it be some sort of financial assistance, we have a service coordinator in place that can also assist them with that. Uh, when it comes to wellness programs, our service coordinator puts on monthly programs to keep the residents abreast as to keeping healthy and trying their best to stay fit. Mayor Frank Jackson stopped by the celebration to have lunch with the residents and to offer a proclamation to the manager. Certificates were handed out to the residents who have been there since the apartment opened 10 years ago. Among the recipients was Miss Sarah Olivia Crawford, who says when Pissinger is the perfect place to live because it feels like a community. Because you meet friends and, and really hate when one leaves, uh, one should pass, and when that happens it's just like a family because everybody tries to support that family. So uh, they're very friendly. I met every, everybody that came in here that I met was very friendly. And we have, I have a new neighbor now. She's much younger than I am, and she's very friendly and very active. <laughs> When Pissinger is one of many senior apartments owned by EDOC. If you want more information, visit their website, ehdoc.org. Marshall Avenue on Cleveland's east side once again hosted their annual Neighborhood Safety Fair. The free event, which began in 2001, is a way to bring the neighborhood together. Well, this community brings the neighbors together in the outside surrounding neighborhoods together. And uh, some of the kids don't get a chance to go to the larger, larger events. So we bring it right here on Marshall Avenue on the east side of town so they could get um, experience on other things firsthand and they could get a little bit closer to it. With me being born and raised in the greater Cleveland area and having known the, the dire straits that our city um, has come from, it took such events like this to actually help uplift and also transform the community and also the face of Cleveland. So it's a back to school twist to it. It also allows the kids to come out here and have fun. But more important, we have firefighters, we have policemen out here. So the theme is safety. So public safety is huge in our city right now. So if nothing else, public safety, that's very integral. And it's more events like this tailored towards safety is needed. Mayor Frank Jackson stopped by to talk to residents. The Euclid Beach rocket ship gave rides to the enthusiastic kids and party pals had a variety of animals on hand, including a pony and goats. Representatives from Care Alliance had information available and told us why they get involved in the event. Because it gives people the knowledge of what Care Alliance Health Clinic offered to the whole community. We do Medicare, Medicare, if you don't have it, and we, uh, and we take all insurance. We do medical, dental, we have a pharmacy, we have an HIV team, we have a, um, a nutritionist, we have a behavior team, and we let people know that we're here to care about their health and provide that care for them. We'll be right back with more TV20 News. After 15 years of smoking, Eva Marie quit. There's a new lung cancer screening that could save her life. You stopped smoking, now start screening. Learn more at savedbythescan.org. Welcome back to TV20 News. The 16th annual Lewis Stokes Community Visionary Award was held recently at the Renaissance Hotel in downtown Cleveland. The award was created in 1996 by the Fairfax Renaissance Development Corporation, with its first honoree being Congressman Lewis Stokes. FRDC has honored a long line of visionary leaders who have demonstrated a lifelong commitment to the struggle for human dignity, respect, and building community, such as Congressman Charles Rangel, Attorney Fred Gray, the Reverend Jesse Jackson, Dr. Edgar Jackson, and this year in honoring Congressman John Lewis. This year, the Honorable Congressman John Lewis of the 5th District, State of Georgia, won the prestigious award. 
Congressman Lewis is a longtime champion of the civil rights movement and was the architect and keynote speaker at the March on Washington in August of 1963. The congressman has always worked under the philosophy of nonviolence. Before accepting the award, the Honorable Congresswoman Marsha L. Fudge of Ohio's 11th Congressional District introduced him. John is deserving of any and all recognitions. For there is no one more brave, no one more fearless, no one more committed than John. A lot of people say they would risk their life for what they believe in. John has done it. In his speech, Congressman Lewis graciously accepted the award while praising the late Congressman Stokes. But to receive this honor, name for Lewis Stokes, is too much. A man of all season. Unbelievable leader. When Lou Stokes stood up and spoke on the floor of the house, people listened. He inspired us all to do our best. For more information on the Lewis Stokes Community Visionary Award, visit fairfaxrenaissance.org. The American Sickle Cell Anemia Association and Omega Sci Fi Fraternity teamed up with Daniel E. Morgan Elementary School for the first annual Sickle Cell Awareness Event and Parade. TV20 reporter Christian Patterson has more. Today was our big uh, topic, uh, sickle cell. We spent the whole week talking about it, um, explaining to kids what it is, uh, why it's important that they eat right, letting them know that, yes, this kid has sickle cell, but you can't get it from him because it's hereditary. So making sure they understood that as well. In the United States, the most common genetic disorder is the sickle cell disease, which is said to affect more than 500,000 newborn babies each year. One out of every 400 African-American infants is born with sickle cell, and one out of 10 to 12 is actually born with the trait. In order for a person or a child to have sickle cell, they have to inherit a gene from both parents. <clears throat> sickle cell is a chronic illness. There is no cure at this time for sickle cell, and it affects your red blood cells, which are your cells that passes the red blood through your capillary vessels. It transports oxygen throughout your body. Councilman Zach Reed speaks on the importance of educating young people on this life-threatening disease. These young people right here might be the young, might be the doctor that grows up, might be the nurse, might be the physician that grows up one day that finds the cure to this disease. So we got to let them, we got to make them aware that this disease, that this disease exists and what can we do working together to try to stamp this disease out. There needs to be more awareness about sickle cell. Sickle cell is one of the leading genetic disorders in this country. There's over 100,000 individuals living and coping with this catastrophic illness. The men of Omega Psi Phi have implemented a social action program for the communities they live in. They're dedicated to educating and helping the community in any way possible. And the sickle cell walk was one of many things they have in store. My goal is to make sure that our community, our kids and our community are aware of health issues and aware of the importance of just having a healthy diet and a healthy lifestyle. So I'm hoping that it continues to grow. Uh, we start our school gardening, so we're talking to kids about eating healthy. We're making sure that they get healthy snacks um, during the daytime. So really pushing the issue of being healthy, being able to provide and get healthy um, foods for yourself. Thanks, Christian. Well, if you love to ride your bike, then the Neo Cycle Festival was the place for you. Hundreds of riders got on their bikes for the fourth annual festival at Edgewater Park. More than 1,200 cyclists competed in races throughout the three-day event, which is the nation's largest urban cycling festival. Cyclists experienced six races, 10 bands, plus 60 local vendors. The festival drew over 12,000 people throughout the weekend, with attendees from 17 states and three countries visiting Cleveland. Some cyclists say they really enjoy the festival each year. Uh, I've done it every year since it started. Um, I do it because a lot of my friends ride in. It supports the local shops. Uh, it's kind of like a, the end of the season. You know, I pretty much ride March through September, and then it starts to trail off, so it's kind of the 
kick off to the end of the year. Mm -hmm. It's a fun little party. It's so cool. I had uh, I had the, the last year's jer uh, shirt on, and I was hiking in Ireland, and someone saw it from Ireland and they're like, oh man, so they want to know all about what this was. And so they said, we're coming, we're coming to Cleveland. So it's just a cool event, you know, it's just all kinds of different cycling. I mean, from BMX to mountain bikes, to cyclocross, to road bikes. I mean, it's every kind of bicycle and, you know, commuter bikes and, you know, racing. It's just, it's the greatest cycling event in, in, the, in the city. The bike festival provided an estimated $1 million in economic impact to Northeast Ohio. NeoCycle was created by the Greater Cleveland Sports Commission. To keep up to date on NeoCycle activities, go to their website, NeoCycle.org. Employees with the City of Cleveland came to Mall C to stretch, run, and exercise as part of the City's Wellness Works program, Outdoor Health Fair. Kelly Smith, the coordinator of Wellness Works, says this program is about more than just being healthy. Well, this program is very important because we just don't focus on just the health of the employees. We try to make sure this is a holistic uh, wellness program. So we care about your finances, your stress, um, your your spiritual. We want to make sure that as a well as a wellness co a program that we're overall for everyone. So um, it's very important. We try to do what we can to make sure that you know a happy employee base is actually very good productivity. Vendors were on hand passing out healthy snacks samples, and literature on being healthy. Attendees kept active by participating in stretching demos, group exercises, and line dancing. The biggest draw was the obstacle course. Smith says that City of Cleveland cares about its employees and that they have access to numerous programs to help you stay healthy. We try to do different activities and programs to support that. We do as far as um, lunch and learns for um, financial wellness. We have physical fitness classes. We have two right now currently running down at um, utilities at 1201. We do that on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays from 530 to 630. Okay. So we try to do different activities and programs to make sure all employees can be included in it. If you would like more information on the available positions with the City of Cleveland, click on the Human Resources tab on the City's homepage. Well, a Labor Day tradition was back at Burke Lakefront Airport. Thousands gathered at the Cleveland National Air Show to watch all the great aerial stunts from the incredible jets and legendary planes. The air show is in its 50th year and still drawing big crowds from all across the country. People look to the sky to see the U.S. Air Force Thunderbirds soaring over Cleveland and the amazing U.S. Army Golden Knights parachute team hurling to Earth. Attendees say they love this event and look forward to coming back next year. My first time at the air show and I really love seeing the tribute to all the people here from the Golden Nuggets, from the United States Air Force parachute team. But it's just a wonderful time here and it's good to see all the family and people out and we're just blessed here in Cleveland to just have, you know, such lovely people and just to have this kind of show. So I just love it and I hope to come back again. Well, I like to see the uh, wonderful power that we have on our Air Force, getting to see the true weapons that our men and women get to protect our country with every day. Thanks for watching TV20 News. We are Cleveland. I'm Leah Haslidge. Up next, we'll have Christian Patterson with the Inside Sports Report.